Hi, this is Jenny Brav of Radiant Wholeness Healing, and today's video is on turning distractive habits into nourishing ones. And you might want to check out the blog post in the link below on turning down the noise, which is a helpful compliment for this video. And before we get started, I would like to invite you to subscribe and turn on notifications and also hit the like button if it feels helpful and especially comment below. Sometimes it feels like I'm sending these into the void. So knowing whether it's working for you or not is really helpful for me. So having said that, I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable. And just feel into any habit or pattern that you feel is preventing you from connecting more deeply with yourself and or with others. This could be shopping, an eating habit. It could be a substance that you're taking or caffeine could be overworking. Busyness, focusing on others' needs. Whatever it might be. And there might be judgment that comes up as well, the inner critic, and if it does, you can say hello, and then set that aside, knowing that our self-criticism only exacerbates the behavior, and really it's not about the behavior, they're just, it's just a symptom of something wanting loving attention. And having said that, noticing what the impact of this habit pattern is on your ability to connect more deeply to yourself, to others, your physical or emotional well-being. Maybe it leads to going to bed late. That's often the case with technology use or binge watching something, or binge reading. And then you feel sleep deprived, any other impact on your well being. might be stress if you're overworking. And again, as you feel into the impact, there might be some judgment and giving the judgment, if it's there, compassion and gently setting it aside. And now starting to feel into what might be underlying of the behavior. And just taking a deep breath, maybe asking yourself that question and seeing what comes up. Or you might imagine that you're looking under the behavior and just seeing if there's a belief about yourself or an emotion. Might be fear. Belief that you're not enough, small, at the mercy of the world. It might be anger, powerlessness. Confusion, grief, whatever it might be. And just breathing into what's coming up for you.
And also asking yourself, noticing if there's anything that might have triggered whatever's coming up for you, maybe a current situation you're in or change that's coming up. Might even be actions that you're taking towards stepping more into your voice, your power, your visibility. Often that can trigger old patterns and fears. And if nothing comes up, you can just continue breathing into the pattern, feeling into it, giving yourself compassion. And then noticing if there are any physical sensations or parts of your body that light up as you came into this. Maybe some parts get really tight, jittery, numb, painful. Just noticing and then asking yourself if there are any patterns, actions, or non action beingness that you know might be helpful but aren't doing. And again, this can bring up judgment, sending it compassion and send it, setting it aside. Maybe more time in nature, slowing down. A few minutes in the morning of stretching, silence, journaling. Making space for creativity or movement. Whatever it might be. And then imagining how you might be feeling or living your life if you did a little less of the distractive pattern, a little more of the nourishing pattern, and spent a little more time on whatever was needing loving attention, if anything arose for that. And whenever you're ready to open your eyes, or you can keep them closed, I'll be naming the points. You can follow along with me or do your own set of points and repeating after me out loud or in your head, modifying the words as needed to match your situation, pausing whenever you need to. Even though I have this distractive habit, and feel free to name the habit out loud. And it's preventing me from connecting more deeply with myself. And it's also impacting my emotional and physical well being. I love and accept myself deeply and completely. Very deep breath, tapping on your head. I have it or pattern. 
And again, feel free to name the specific one you're working with. Inside of the eyebrows, I see you. Outside of the eyes, I feel you. Under the eyes. I'm sorry I've been blaming you. Under and above the lips, mad at you. Deep breath. Under the collarbone. I know you're just trying to help me. Middle of the sternum. Avoid feeling. Ribs. Stay busy. Side of the body. Numb out. Wrist. Thank you so much. Other wrist for trying to protect me in the only way you know how. Head. And I acknowledge any part of me. Inside of the eyebrows. That developed this pattern. Outside of the eyes, or maybe inherited this pattern. Under the eyes. To feel a little safer. Under and above the lips, a little less out of control. Under the collarbone, that's exactly what that part needed to do. Middle of the sternum. To survive. Ribs. Breathe. And I can hang on to this habit and pattern side of the body as long as I need to. Rest to feel safe. Other wrist. And it's possible it's not helping me anymore. Head, it's possible that at this point, inside of the eyebrows, it's just preventing me from connecting to myself. Outside of the eyes, from my inner knowing. Under the eyes. which is actually leading me to feel less in control. Under and above the lips, breathe. Not more. Under the collarbone. I acknowledge any emotion or belief underlying the pattern. Middle of the sternum. High grief. Ribs. High anger. 
side of your body, high powerlessness. And feel free to add any other emotion that might be coming up. Wrist. Breathe. Another wrist. I believe that I'm not enough. Head, the world is against me. And feel free to add any other belief that's true for you inside of the eyebrow. I see you. Outside of the eyes, I feel you. Under the eyes, breathe. Under the lips. Hi, younger me. Under the collarbone. And I know you're triggered. Middle of the sternum, scared. Ribs. I know this is reminding you of all the times when side of the body. And feel free to name what it might be reminding you of. Times when you felt out of control, not important enough, neglected. Um, for the head, breathe. Inside of the eyebrows. It was so smart of you. Outside of the eyes, under those circumstances. Under the eyes, to develop this pattern. And above the lips, and name whatever pattern you developed back then as protection. It might be the same one as now. It might be a precursor to it. Might have been attention seeking that's then turned into relationship patterns, whatever it might be. Learning to seek comfort in food. Distraction under the collarbone, breathe. That is exactly what you had to do at the time. Middle of the sternum. And the good news is, ribs, our circumstances have changed now. side of the body, it's possible we're ready to release this now. Rest. It's possible we have other resources now. Other rest that are actually nourishing and not just distracting. Possible, we're not alone now. And I invite you to pause the tapping for a moment and bring your hands to any body part where you're feeling the vulnerability, the uncertainty, the fear, the anger, grief, whatever it might be. It could be the heart. The hand on the heart of the belly. 
the shoulders, anything that feels good and nourishing. And just bringing your breath there, imagining that those scared parts, your young parts, are being held and loved and receiving whatever they didn't originally. It might be loving attention, reassurance, presence. And then when that's feeling more spacious, calmer, I invite you to hold out whatever habit you're working with today or pattern or belief. I'm just really examining it, whatever it might be. And nodding to it, sending gratitude for the ways it's helped you try to uh, prevent you from feeling too vulnerable or scared or whatever it might be, alone, try to bring you comfort safety. And if and only if you're getting a yes from your adult self and your inner child or your current self to release this, then I invite you to do so with me. If you're getting a no, then really honor that or maybe you're not sure. Don't there's no need to push it. You can do this video again and see how you're feeling. If you feel ready to, let's release it together to energy and light. Releasing any cords that are tying you to a pattern. Also, often these patterns have some family or ancestral components. So releasing any cords that might be I knew to any other family member who had distractive habits. And then inviting in any pattern that feels like it would be really nourishing. Might be spending more time in nature, in movement, meditation, journaling. Imagining that you're rewiring the neural pathways that are conditioned towards seeking the distractive habit as a default and rewiring it into this nourishing habit instead. At the beginning, you can also be doing them side by side. There's no should, there's no shaming, there's no right or wrong. There's just an invitation. Bring that invitation to make time for the more nourishing habit and bring that into your body, your muscles, your nervous system, rewiring your nervous system so that this is a default setting. Bring it into the big muscles of your thigh. Tapping all over your body, shaking it out, and touching something that feels grounding. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, and I hope it's helpful.